Muffin at 434-941-9749. And we welcome to the studio now Adrienne Blankenship. She's from Eddington. And we're going to talk this morning about your daughter, Emily, who has a very, very rare, I mean, a, one in a hundred people, is it worldwide, who have is that right. a worldwide cloves syndrome. And Emily is uh, almost four. Almost four. She's almost four years old. She was born October uh, in October 2009. And um, Adrian, tell us a little bit about Emily uh, has a twin brother, and they were born prematurely. And, and tell us a little bit about the birth and when you realized that there was something something going on with Emily. Okay. Uh, yes, they were born um, at 28 weeks. So I had them 20. Uh, they were in development 28 weeks. Uh, when I, um, Emily was uh, 2 pounds, 11 ounces, Michael was 2 pounds, 4 ounces. We knew there was a problem with Emily at about 18 weeks in an ultrasound that we, um, that we scheduled, just a normal routine ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And we noticed there were some problems with her feet, but, you know, we thought, okay, something yeah. happened, a virus or something during development, and we'll fix it when she's born. And it wasn't until she started putting weight on during thing in the NICU that, that it was much more involved. And then a few months later is when we were, after she was released in the NICU, we were told that she had closed syndrome. Well, what did you notice with her feet? Her feet actually were shaped like hands. So her toes were off to the side, like like thumbs. Would be. Wow. Um, and, you know, her, her um, just kind of, I guess, split up more like fingers. Mm -hmm. So. And it, it wasn't until a little while later... Uh, April of 2009, um, I guess that would have been 2010. She was born in October of right. 2009, right? April, April, of, April of 2010. Right. That she was diagnosed. It, it took specialists from Boston Children's Hospital to figure out what was going on. Right. We actually had the geneticist here from UVA say, you know, we'll send records to NIH, the National Institute of Health in, um, in Bethesda, send records there, and then my husband and I were searching online and we saw a doctor in Boston and we sent her records to Boston as well. And that's when they came back and said, yeah, we think she has Globe syndrome, but bring her in, we'd like to see her. And they confirmed it. And it, it's, it causes uh, parts of her body, predominantly the lower portion, to grow at an, in an inexplicable and uncontrollable way. Right. I mean, tell us how this is affecting her. Yeah. You had a little news release, and there's some pictures of her running around. How is it affecting her? I would say, uh, physically, she she can't move like like her brother can. She uh, doesn't have the flexibility for her. So she has. So let me back up. Excuse me. Uh, her lower body is really affected. So she has all of these soft tissue tumors, mm -hmm. yeah, or lipomas, uh, from from her chest all the way down to her feet. Her right side is affected more than her left side, but it's things, you know, where her legs are different lengths. So she has. The leg length discrepancy. We don't. There's. It's so hard to find shoes for her just because her left, her left foot is very um, fat, fatty mm -hmm. around it. So it's very thick. And then her right foot is very wide. So her option is to heat up her which I read in a newsletter from a Proteus Syndrome a newsletter. So we heat this up and we stretch them out. And that it's really, unless we go to, you know, an orthopedic shop and we've done it. Right. So, so her legs are affected. She has her, uh, these um, nutrition, you know, she's very, her upper body is very skinny where the fatty tumors don't exist because the fatty tumors are stealing her nutrition. So her neck and her face and her shoulder and arms are very, very, very thin. What can be done um, surgically or otherwise? There is, so the only way right now to, uh, to help her is surgical intervention. There's no drug or anything like that that will really reduce this. Uh, this but surgery is it's hard because when you start debulking uh, lymphomas like this, there's a chance you could interfere with blood flow and then develop blood clots. So it's kind of a medically necessary um, suggestion that the doctor would give us to to go in and, and start removing these. And is that something you would have to continue to have?
I've done with them now. I've been thinking these things will replicate if you cut them out. They do grow back. So it just depends on, I think, what's affected and how much of the cells are affected in that area to, to how fast they'll grow back. She has had a few removed, and the regrowth has been.